Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of Dime Box Discoveries. This is part two, I guess, so to speak, of the Cards from the Molar show um, in April of 2023. And legitimately this time, so the pennies last time, these are dimes. These are all dimes from here on over, except for in the back, those are quarters, and then these are 50 cents and a buck in the back. But basically these are dimes, so here's what you came for. These are the better cards. These are a dime apiece. Let's uh, jump into it and show you what I got. Um, and it was a very fruitful day for my Oakland A's team set needs. Some of these I needed. Some of these are upgrades of the ones I currently have, but for Diamond Peace. And the 73 is Bill North, Vita Blue, and Burt Campanaris. And 74 is Holtzman, Rudy, um, Dick Green, Bill North again, Daryl Knowles, Pat, uh, Pat Bork. And then the World Series and the team card, 75. I have this, but it might be an upgrade. I don't know off cup, but the corner are really, really sharp. There's an 84 with Henderson on it. 85, these are the tops traded. Needed both of these, Don Sutton and Dusty Baker. And then I needed some Eckersleys in the more recent, in the 90s here. Um, and a Jason Jombie in the, was it 2001? No, 97. So, um, yeah, so those are great for team needs for Oakland A's, for Diamond Peace, some good vintage. Very happy with that. Um, some more vintage. Check it out. This one actually books for a couple bucks. I mean, when you find checklists, it's a 73 checklist, in very good shape. When you find checklists from the mid-70s and earlier, they usually book okay because, you know, back in the day, we didn't have the internet. They weren't checking things off on, you know, TCDB or anything else. You actually would check it off on the card. This one not checked off. Corner's in pretty good shape. So that was a great find. Uh, I'll have some good trade value. It's an Eddie Matthews in the 73. John Matlock and Jack Brohammer. I'm going to check and see if those are better than ones I currently have in my collection. 74, Bobby Bonson. Yeah, okay shape. It's okay. 75 with Hunter and Capra. I mean, the ones again, these are all a dime. The Tony Perez is in terrible shape, but it's a Tony Perez. So, And then this is 75 Don Sutton out of the SSPC. So that's really cool out of 75. Now, I'm not going to pick this up because there's – well, I'm going to pick it up and show you. I'm not going to go through it before I throw them all. These are all Mark McGuire's, all ones that I needed for my collection. An unbelievable amount. There were 96 alone from the one bin, and there were more from some others. So there are well over 100 different Mark McGuire's I didn't have in my collection. It's going to catapult me from like 34th or 35th on TCDB into the top 25. So um, really just a cool, cool find of like a whole row of them, and I went through them all individually. So I don't even know if I can figure out how to put them back in the, in the bin here. Um, well over 100 Mark McGuire's. Really an incredible find. Very, very pleased with that. All right. Um, let's go to some 80s stuff. How about that? I know you guys like your 80s stuff because I like my 80s stuff. How about two Johnny Bench Fleers? By the way, what's what's the deal with the line? I mean, I guess that's how the card was made, but that's weird. I guess you should look that up. I don't really know what the deal with that is. I should look that up. I mean, it looks like it's the netting in the back or something. I don't know. Or no, there is no netting. I don't know what the deal with it is, but it's on both of them, so I don't know. Um... So Johnny Bench, it's not from the 1980s, but it's a little throwback. This is really cool. This is my friend Scott. It's Scott, don't call me Chris Flint. Um, Don Manley, but check it out. It's a Tiffany. Man, I love Tiffany's. You never come across Tiffany's in the dime box, especially, especially not a star like Manley. I found some Tiffany's in the past, but they've never been stars. So to find a Manley is awesome. I'll go to my guy, Scott. Um, here is a Steve Carlton in the uh, 81 Fleer Star stickers. Here's an OPG Eddie Murray, 86, which is cool. Got some good trade value. Here's 81 home run leaders with Jackson and Schmidt and Ogilvy. Um, Chipper Jones rookie card in the 90s. I don't know why that's not in the 90s pile, uh, whatever. And then Bill Dorn, local guy. Kent DeColvey, a local guy. It's a top traded. And a Billy Martin as a manager of the A's. So this is where the Chipper Jones should have been in the 90s pile. That's okay. Electric Diamond Tony Gwynn for a dime. That is awesome. Great trade bait for someone out there. Jose Canseco, 92 Leaf Black Gold. I got a guy who's putting that into that set, so I'll get that one. Earl Hershiser, my guy Kent. How's it going, man? Uh, BG Falcons right here for you, Earl Hershiser Collector. You probably got the Metal Universe, but I wanted to buy it just so I can give you a shout out. He was the very first subscriber I ever had, so I look for BG guys, for him, Bowling Green guys. Make a comment, tell me who I should look for for you. Who do you collect? And give me a good reason, like, hey, this guy's from my hometown, or this guy once played catch with my kid. Just anything. Let me know. And I'll look for them and give you a shout out. 
um, Craig Biggio and the Skybox Premium. It looks cool. It's a good looking car. They made some good cars in the 90s. So I thought they looked really good. So uh, Gary Carter signing autographs on the Bowman. Those Bowmans are always really popular. Him signing autographs from the kids. That That's just really cool. I like the picture. Uh, Phil Nevin in the Team USA jersey. You know I love my Team USA. I'm from the 80s and 90s. And uh, Phil Nevin, man, the, the just it seemed like the sky was the limit for him. So that's a really cool one. And you know I love my Fleer Pro Vision, especially this year, in the 94 and 95 both, because, man, that's just really cool. Man Ram got a hold of a tornado there. So it's beautiful, beautiful cards. I mean, great artistry. I, I get excited about, does a card look good? Does a Gary Carter one look good? Does that... Ramirez Fleer All Pro look good. And it does look good. And those are cool. So here's some oddball kind of stuff. This was the Heroes highlights from Upper Deck. Upper Deck gave an opportunity to certain dealers to buy cards from the set. So people would, could buy the set. And I can't remember if they said they sold like 6,000 sets or something. So these cards don't come by very often. Um, that's a really great find. Goes for a few bucks. Uh, really nice pickup. Duracell, Nolan Ryan. I'm starting to find the Duracell bit by bit. I should have kept the ones I had, but I traded them off the people who needed them. And so now I really can't put the other set, but that's cool. I still love pulling the Duracell out. Carlton Fist, the Ball Street, I pull a lot of those. Um, I'm going to come back to those two in a minute. There's an all-time Giants, Wes Westrom. Your name is Wes Westrom. Interesting. <clears throat> and then this MLB Sports Clicks card with Ichiro Bonds and A-Rod on it. So this is Sweeney and Cliff Lloyd. This is from LS's Little Son. They put cards out in the early 90s. This is from their high school baseball collection um, from Sweeney and Cliff Floyd. Now, Little Sun put out some crazy stuff. They had like women's bowling cards and stuff. But the coolest thing I ever did is Little Sun put out a set of baseball writers cards. I think they were like 91, 92, something like that. And it's got all the classic writers in it. Beautiful set in terms of who's in it because you don't find those cards anywhere else. The two most sought after are Grantland Rice, obviously classic writer, and W.P. Kinsella, the man who wrote the book that would eventually be turned into Field of Dreams. Hence why the character's name in Field of Dreams was Ray Kinsella, because the guy who wrote the book's name was W.P. Kinsella. It was a nod to him for he wrote the book. Now, it wasn't called Field of Dreams. It was called something else. But that's what the book was based on. Anyway, he's got the most sought after card in that Little Sons Baseball Writers series, which I've come across one time ever in a quarter box, actually. Um, so that is amazing. And now you know the rest of the story. You know all of my food stuffs. Check this out. First year Drake's. It had 30 of the 33 cards in there for the first year. It was dang near a complete set. So three bucks, you know, as a diamond piece. I have two of the others. So I guess I'm one card short now of the first complete set of Drake's. Here's a second set. It had about half of the cards it needed in there. Something like that. So that was great. So I picked up those. And then um, this is the third year, which had basically every single one missing like two or three. So I'm basically about done with this set now too. Unbelievable. I mean, for a diamond piece, I basically got a complete Drake set for three bucks um, for any of these. Uh, so that is absolutely amazing. Great finds in beautiful, beautiful shape. They're all stacked together. Someone must have just taken a set and thrown it in there. Happy to pull it out. Speaking of foodstuffs, you know I love my foodstuffs. How about some Hostess? Ron Guidry, Lee Mazzilli, and Alan Ashby. Now, keep in mind, these are poorly cut, but also they have tape all over the back of them. So these are in horrible shape. Just terrible shape. I love them. For a diamond piece, I was jumping all over those. Um, I, I think they're great. Tell me what you think of Hostess and what condition you're looking for in those. Um, here's a 3D Superstars. Not in great shape at all. It came out of Kellogg's or something like that. Now we go to the 90s. We've got Post working on that set, close to finishing up Barry Larkin and Kyle Jr. You get some Jimmy Dean sausage with the Ricky Henderson card. There's a Chewy Quaker, Chewy Granola Bars, Tim Raines. Ralston Prina, dog food. Jim Rice, there's a Baseball's Best McDonald's, uh, Roger Clemens, and a Cracker Jack, Jason Chiambi. Um, how about whatever these things are back here, random. I love this when they come with a coin embedded in them. So there's Manny Ramirez with a coin in it. For a dime, I think it's a great pickup. I think that's the brass one, the cheaper one, but still really cool. I totally dig it. Love it anytime I see those. And a couple of the fake uh, trophy rookie cards, in a manner of speaking. Um, there we go. So these are really cool, too. There was a stack of like 40 of these different kinds of things. These are the Topps Black Gold winners. They've been turned in, and you know they've been turned in. 
they were redeemed because they had the names on the back like this, not the information on where to send it. Um, but anyway, they had a bunch of these, so I picked up just a couple of them. Two A's, the B, the C, the D, but check this out. Boom, the A, B, C, D winners. All four, is it 44 cards? Yeah, all 44 cards. Um, boom, all 44 cards on that one. They were sending, they were redeemed. But you just do not come across these ever. And they were in there for diamond pieces. These are the only two they had of the A, B, C, and D. I also picked up the A and B, uh, both those they had. And the C and D picked up both those they had. And then in the 90, uh, these are 94, and then these are 93s. There's an A, a B, a C, and a D of those. But man, oh man, you never come across these. These are great trade bait. They actually sell for a decent amount. So for the dime box, that's great. But he had so many, he must have had like 40, 50, 60 of these winners of like just a random like A or B or C. It was crazy. Um, also, speaking of crazy, Top Standing Club, these are the members only. You had to be a member of the Top Standing Club like club to be able to order these. I think they sold like 6,000 sets of these or something, and you had to break open the set to get them. So there's an Eckersley members only, an Alomar members only, Gary Sheffield, Jim Tomei, uh, Lou Whitaker, and Eddie Murray, and Don Slott. So fantastic. And then a first day issue, I think they did 2,000 of these per one. I mean, I could be wrong on these. Don't quote me on this, but 2,000 per Albert Bell. So a lot of stars in the members only, um, moderate stars anyway. And... Modern Star, Albert Bell, in the first day issue. I love those parallels. They usually go for yeah, a buck or two, depending on who it is, obviously, and whatnot. But they make great, great trade bait, bait for people who are trying to finish. Like, say, like I click Maguire's, and I don't have the Maguire's members only. So maybe I can find someone who has a Maguire one they're trying to trade. I can give them an Eckersley. I can give them a two-for-one even, see what we can do. Anywho, let's go back to some not really vintage, vintage guys. Billy Williams, and then unlicensed. 1990 Chicago sports car, sports stars. That's really cool. I dig that. I totally dig that. That looks great. And then how about some of the Donners from the early 80s with Campy, uh, James Bell, Roberto Clemente, and Monty Irvin. There's a Willie Mays. Lefty Grove. I think I may, I may start collecting some Lefty Grove. I do collect Roy Campanella, everything I come across of him because we share the same birthday. And there's Eddie Matthews. I've said before, much I love these top stadium clubs. I simply love them. They're such beautiful, beautiful cards. Oh, top same club. I give you credit. You really knock it out of the park. How about we go to some football and more vintage football? Check it out. You know what this is? It's a Tom Dempsey rookie card. A little bit, um, that's not even dinged up. That's more like something on it. It's actually in really good shape, relatively speaking. You just don't find these in great shape. Got a little something on the back there. I can maybe, I don't know, scratch it off. I don't know. But it's a Tom Dempsey rookie card. That is really cool. There's a Norm Sneed. Now, speaking of rookie cards, there's a pair George Mirror rookie cards. This one's in really good shape. And this one, eh, not so much. It's not terrible, terrible, but it's not great. But man, oh man, this is really good vintage right here. Um, 84 Tony Dorsett, a pair of those. Once again, these are diamond piece. There's an 85 with, um, I love the team cards. I've got every single one of these now. But this is just, this one's beautiful. I thought this one was a beautiful photo. So I picked it up with Eric Dickerson. About Joe Montana, 1988 tops, and then a Steve Young in the 91, 92, 92 tops. Um, this is a gold inkit of Tim Brown. I love Tim Brown. And check these out. These are 1991, 91, 92, 91 CFL cards. Doug Flutie's first year, and Warren Moon, just kind of like a throwback to what he had done in the league before he went to the NFL. David Fulch was one of my most favorite players growing up as a Bengals safety. Also now, he uh, spends his time ministering to people in jail. So the dude legitimately did something really cool with his life after football. Credit to him. And check it out. Foodstuffs and old football. These are Wonder Bread. Wonder Bread. No one really overly cool, relatively speaking, but it's Wonder Bread football in good shape. And you never find Wonder Bread in, in decent shape. Anyway, I shouldn't say good, decent shape. And then this one, it's Doug Williams. It's the Buccaneers. It's the Cream Sickle. Man, if that is not a beautiful card, I don't know what is. Um, dime here, check it out. Now you're going to say, Jeff, what, what maybe was the most valuable of all the dimes? You're not going to believe me if I told you. It is these two cards. They're not the same. One is tops. One is OPG. They're hockey checklist cards from 1974-75. These things go anywhere from 10 to 40 or 50 bucks, depending on what kind of shape they're in. Once again, vintage checklists. And hockey's hard to find, so... I grabbed them, didn't know what, they, what they're worth, because like I said, I always buy vintage checklists if I see them in good shape, unchecked off. 
These things are beautiful. They're beauties. One's tops, one's OPG. Great find. This is cool. It's If you saw my penny, it was something similar to this. This is now the dime. So this is a sample card that was like in something. And it, so you had to like tear it out like a magazine. See, it's got the deckled edge. Beautiful. This is a mascot card from some Chicago team. His name is Skates. It's a wolf on skates. That's got to be frightening. Uh, Brett Hall and something called Pocket Pages. Some, you know, oddball kind of set. Check this out. This is really, really cool. It's a 1984 New York Islanders, some kind of team card. It's from the Islanders News. It's in amazing shape. It's them winning cup number four, and it is a beauty. Love this card. Someone's going to love to have it in their collection. Uh, I collect Joe Sackick, so there's some Sackicks. Um, and then this is really cool. Michael Goulet, who had an excellent career, made multiple All-Star games. These are a pair of his rookie cards. This one's in pretty good shape. This one is not. But both them rookie cards, totally dig it. Really excited about grabbing those. Dirk Graham played for a number of years in the NHL. So if you find a, number, a guy who played for a number of years in the NHL, his minor league card from the mid-80s, man, you've got to grab that every single time. Uh, Dennis Savard as a joker in a, in a Blackhawks team set. That's really cool. These are like some kind of confectioner's series kind of cards they made for some convention. See, there's National Sports Collectors Convention. So that is really, really cool. Those are a little bit different. Um, and then Rob Blake, once again, for Kent. Kent, you got another shout out, man. I'm really taking care of you. Uh, that'll be going to him. He's a, there's another Bowling Green guy. Uh, Matt Sundin, Guy Lafleur. I love it when it's Stanley Cup cards or, you know, playoff cards from back in the day. These, this 1978, well, 77, 78. That's a beautiful one, man. Uh, OPG, Nordiques. You know, I'm a Nordiques slash Avalanche fan. Nordiques card from the year when they were just horrifically bad. 12 victories, 61 losses. They were terrible, but I totally dig that card. Here's a Dale Hunter and an OPG. Um, and this is really exciting. Check it out. That's a box bottom. Yes. Hockey box bottom. Never come across one before in my life. That's the first one I have in my collection. It's a Topps box bottom, Al McKinnis. Um, Alex Tanga is a Sports Illustrated for kids. You know I love my Sports Illustrated for kids. And it's an avalanche. Double exciting for me. Uh, Ball Street with Joe Juno and Eric Lindros. Nice little oddball there. This, they had like 50 of these in there. This from the commissioner of the OHL. But I like it because there's Santa in the back. And I collect a lot of the Santa cards. So, and then vintage. Some vintage hockey. There's no PG. Vintage from 74, 75. There's a Rockies. It's not the avalanche, but... Yeah, still kind of cool. There's Ray Bork. That's cool. Brett Hall and the Team USA. I dig that. Um, there's just Landis Gog um, from the Avalanche. And Tim Horton. Man, get you some coffee. There's Tim Horton. So that is really cool. Okay, now we get a little bit different. These were a quarter a piece. Uh, check it out. Picked up a Joe Sackick. And a... Um, is that... Yeah, that's a... Yeah, it's a Tackick. So a couple of Joe Sackicks. There's a Peter Forsberg and a different McGuire Bowman Best. So these were a quarter a piece. All cards I needed. Well, I guess do we need any cards truly, but you know what I'm saying. Now we go to vintage. These were these two piles were 50 cents a piece. Um, check it out. You know, I do those A's team sets. I really was going 70s and up, but man, I started to find so many 50s and 60s. And they were in pretty good shape for 50 cents a piece. I couldn't pass it up. Look, it's Blue Moon Odom, man. 1967. Burt Campanaris. Um, so here's some good 64s. They're just in, in pretty good shape for 50 cents a piece, man. I mean, look at that, 65s. These are 60s, I believe. 59s for a quarter a piece. Um, and then some 76s I needed. I checked these ones off my list. So all these are ones I needed for my team sets. Coming along nicely, 50 cents a piece. You had to jump on it. Also 50 cents a piece, not A's, but Alvin Dark. Just a cool one. Check it out. It's one of those uh, Topps Anniversary stamped ones. Um, I picked those up because I think they're neat. And then these two in really good shape. I want to see if they're better than the ones I have in my collection. And if they're not, that's fine. If they're better, then I'm going to replace them and upgrade in my Topps also Rookie Card Trophy collection that I have. And finally, last but not least, this one was, it says $250. It was half price, so it was a buck and a quarter. This is an upgrade from the one I have in my set, which is in terrible shape. This one's in great shape, buck and a quarter. All the rest of these were a dollar. So these are 59s. I really have a ton of the 59s now, to be honest with you. Like a bunch of them. So there's Hank Bauer. I think these are 60s. Uh, Joe Rudy, rookie card for a dollar. These, like I said, these are all a dollar piece. That's a 69. Hank Bauer for a buck a piece. 71, Philippe Lou in really nice shape. 
um, for buck a piece. And Pumpsy Green, not an A's, but once again, we're going to check and see if that's better than the one I currently have in my collection, and I think it is. Anyway, that's what I got. Dime is basically here on over with a lot of interesting stuff, some oddballs, some checklists, everything else. Um, a lot of food stuff, some of the Topps Gold, which I love, and the winner's cards. And then a lot of vintage over here that I need for my Ace Team sets. Anyway, tell me what you like. Tell me what you thought was the most interesting. Tell me what you thought was a terrible buy. Whatever. Just tell me something. Let's have a good, fun conversation. Tell me about the guys you remember seeing playing. Anyway, hope you're all having fun. Enjoy the hobby. Make it fun. Um, make it what you want. And other than that, have a good evening.